Should you make extra contributions into your super? That is the golden question facing many working Australians. And in this video, I'm going to provide you with the pros and cons of making extra payments into your super, which will hopefully help you make the right decision. Let's get straight into it. So your superannuation account is basically your piggy bank for when you retire. And in my opinion, whether you should contribute more into super depends on what your life goals are and when you plan to retire. Now there are usually two types of people, those who are happy to keep working until retirement age and those who want to retire earlier. If you enjoy your job and are content to work until preservation age, which is currently around 60 years old in Australia, then yes, it does make sense to contribute more into super. The biggest advantage of investing extra into super is the tax savings. In the Barefoot Investor book, Scott Pape has an entire chapter about maximizing your super so you can live well once you reach retirement age. And he describes the superannuation system as the greatest tax dodge in Australia. So what does he mean by this? Well, let me explain. In Australia, your employer must pay you around 11% of your gross salary into your super account. This is the law, so it's non-negotiable. Basically, the whole point of super is that the government doesn't trust you to save enough money for your retirement. So for your own good, they have made a law to force you to save a portion of your pay into a retirement fund containing stocks and other investments. The idea is in approximately 30 years time when you retire, your super investments should have grown enough to be able to fund your retirement years. However, Scott Pape seems to think that 11% super won't be enough for you to retire comfortably, so he actually encourages his readers to increase their super contribution to 15%. So you can do this by simply asking your employer. So go ask your payroll officer to increase your super contribution to 15% by taking it out of your pre-tax pay. This is known as salary sacrifice. The super payments, which are called concessional contributions, are taxed at 15%. For the average Australian, your regular income is taxed at 32.5% plus a 2% Medicare levy if you earn more than $45,000 a year. Let's use an example to explain this more clearly. Jimmy works for an Australian tech company and he earns $75,000 per year before tax. Jimmy wants a salary sacrifice $5,000 per year. Let's have a look at the two columns which shows the difference between if he does or does not salary sacrifice. In the first row, we have his taxable income of 75K if he doesn't salary sacrifice and 70K if he does salary sacrifice. In the second row, we have $5,000 of salary sacrifice contribution. In the third row, we have the salary sacrifice contribution tax charged at 15%, so that comes to $750. In the fourth row, we have the income tax, which is your marginal tax rate, depending on how much you earn. So since Jimmy earns 75K, he falls into the third category, which is $5,092 plus 32.5% for every dollar over 45K. So if we do the maths on the screen, so for the first column, that would be 30K over. So you would times that by 32.5%, then add 5,092, which comes to a total of $14,842. Then you do the same calculation for the second column. And since there's 5K less of taxable income, the total is $13,217. And in the fifth row, like most Australians, Jimmy is charged a Medicare levy of 2%. So if we total this all up, Jimmy is left with $975 more if his salary sacrifices 5K, thanks mainly to the low 15% tax rate. So for most people, a 15% tax rate will be much lower than their marginal tax rate. You will benefit greatly because you get to pay less tax and you get to boost your retirement savings at the same time. And this is why Scott Pape calls this the greatest tax dodge in Australia because you are legally saving on a lot of tax. You're basically getting paid to invest for your future. However, there is a limit to how much extra you can contribute. The max amount you can contribute is $27,500 per financial year. And that includes both your employer and concessional contributions. So you may want to do some maths on how many extra percentages you can salary sacrifice without going over the max threshold. In in addition, you can also make up to $110,000 of non-concessional contributions per financial year. So this is the max extra contribution you can make from your after-tax pay. You won't be charged a 15% tax since you've already been taxed your marginal tax rate. So you might be asking, why even make the non-concessional contributions when you can just invest outside of super? That's a good question. And like most answers in life when you become an adult, it all comes down to tax once again. Once your money is inside your super account, you are taxed at a 15% rate on any investment earnings such as dividends. If you invested in the same product outside of super, you'll be paying your higher marginal tax rate on any income from dividends. So this leaves more money in your super account to compound over time. And speaking of compounding, this is the second main advantage of contributing more into super. Compound interest basically means you are earning interest on your interest. The longer you can allow your money to compound, the bigger your savings will be at the finish line. So think of it this way. A typical Australian starts working in their early 20s and retires in their 60s. That is four whole decades of compound interest working its magic in the background for you. Because you are taxed at a lower rate inside your super, you get to invest more and the interest you earn is being reinvested over decades. And to put the cherry on top of the cake, your investment earnings are generally tax-free up to $1.7 million during your retirement phase. And quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. The information in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is general advice only and does not take into account your personal financial situation. So please use this video as a guide only to do your own research and so please use this video as a guide only to do your own research and speak to a professional if you would like personalized financial advice. So with that out of the way, let's move on. So on the other side of the coin, if you are someone who plans to retire earlier than 60, then it may not make sense for you to make extra payments into super. And that is because the main disadvantage of investing more into super is that the money you contribute now will be stuck until you reach preservation age, which is around 60. 
Some people may want to enjoy their retirement years when they are still young and healthy so they can go traveling around the world. Ideally, you don't want to be doing a round the world trip with other riders in both knees and a bad back. Having said all this, while it's nice to imagine retiring early, it's easier said than done. If you go down this route, then you'll need a solid plan on how you'll achieve it. Please don't just YOLO into retirement. If you wish to retire early, then you'll need to find ways to make more money than the regular person who plans to retire at 60. To do this, you'll need to earn a ton of money early on, then save and invest it into income producing assets like stocks and real estate until your nest egg is large enough that it can pay for your expenses every year. So for example, if you invest in stocks, you can live off the dividends. And if you invest in real estate, you can live off the rental income. This is basically what the FIRE movement is all about. Maximizing your income and saving it and investing it into a nest egg until it can fund your lifestyle. But that in itself is a topic for another video. An obvious advantage of not investing more into super is that you have more money to invest in other things. So besides investing into traditional assets like stocks and real estate, you can use the money to invest in your own business. Many wealthy people have their own successful business because most of the profits go directly to them. Whereas if you work for someone, you're basically making them rich. It's actually very hard to get wealthy enough to retire early just from your salary. You can't really save your way into wealth, but you can earn your way into wealth. Unless of course you are part of the top 3% of Australians who have a high paying job. But for the rest of us mortals, the best way to get wealthy is to start your own business or side hustle. And if you invest extra into your super, then the opportunity cost may be you never start your business in the first place. In the end, you need to be realistic and honest with yourself. If you choose not to contribute extra, then make sure you're willing to do the extra work so that you achieve your financial goal and not be left behind in limbo with barely enough money to retire. If you're not willing to go the extra yard, then the smart choice may be to simply invest extra into super. Here are a few other things to consider before making a decision. Before investing extra into super, make sure you have paid off all your high interest debt like credit card debt or personal loans. Basically any debt with an interest of over 8%, you should be paying that off ASAP because this is a guaranteed tax-free return unlike investing into stocks inside or outside super. And make sure you have an emergency fund that can cover your living expenses for at least three to six months. This fund is to cover you just in case you lose your job or get into an accident. Trust me, you may not think it will happen to you until it does. I like to think of an emergency fund as an insurance against bad luck, so make sure you have one because you just never know when you'll have an unlucky day. And on that day, you'll be glad that you have a bunch of cash. Remember, once you invest into super, you will not be able to access it for a long time, so it's nice to have some extra money to cover you when you need it. Also, if you're a high income earner or you have your own business, then it's not a bad idea to invest extra into your super even if you plan to retire early. Unfortunately, most people won't be able to do this, but if you're able to, why not have the best of both worlds? By the way, if you have made this far into the video, then I love you and I appreciate you. The secret word today is beach, so comment that down below so I know who you are. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be releasing a lot more personal finance videos like this in the future and you don't want to miss them. So to summarize, I think investing extra into super is a good idea for most people due to the dual benefits of compound interest and tax savings. If you have decades ahead of you, then even the smallest savings can reap huge rewards in the future. However, if you want to retire early for whatever reason, then it may be better for you to save the money and invest in a nest egg that you can access at any age of your life. And to help you do this, check out this video on screen where I show you how to create multiple streams of income so you can retire early. Thank you for watching, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.